Student track is, well, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. So the projects and activities that you guys are going to do over the next couple of days, over the next 20 days, actually involve all of these disciplines. Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. So the steam truck activities are actually aligned to the um, Georgia Performance Standards, which is pretty awesome. So before the six day project, um, I actually sat down with Jason and I actually selected the standards that I wanted the students to focus on. So it was very beneficial because the students were actually working on real world applications of what we were actually learning in class. STEAM Truck, uh, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math, is a mobile makerspace, an innovation lab on wheels. We're designed to close opportunity gaps uh, that are too often predicted by zip code, and we do that by taking STEAM Truck and driving to schools and communities that need this the most. We bring state-of-the-art uh, tools and equipment, but we also bring community experts that know how to use them and work directly with teachers. And over the course of 20 days, we have kids tackle real problems. They design solutions, they use design thinking process, and then they use those tools and community experts and the teachers, they get their hands dirty and they build things together. Are there any other questions for me at this time about Steam Truck? Yes. Did they just add that A? So for a long time, it was just STEM. But the arts are a very, very important um, aspect of science and technology and engineering, so they added the A. We're STEAM truck, not STEM truck, uh, and we really thought about how we're gonna make the A intentional, uh, and probably the most um, impactful way is hiring local artists. So every single day of program, we have a local artist who is part of our programming. Uh, we use Stanford's design theory approach, which calls for radical collaboration. And so sometimes our artists may not have a technical skill, say they know how to use a 3D printer or a laser cutter, but they bring uh, a much different skill set that has always, in every single case, impacted in a positive way what students are able to do and our end products that kids are able to make. STEAM truck, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. So we are taking STEM and we're throwing the art into it. As the artist in residence, I uh, have compared it to throwing sriracha on the maker movement. So not everything we do actually has a certain kind of outcome that's like turning the light on or something like that. We teach the kids to make a mess in the area of A. My favorite thing about the STEAM truck is destroying things where we uh, did the printer, then made it into our own art project. As a maker mentor, um, we are interfacing with kids to kind of get them engaged in the arts and technology, kind of introducing them to the, the, just the possibilities that having an awareness of tools and materials, um, what that could turn into later in life. The steam truck staff is going to be doing some activities with you all. You all are going to be designing a bridge out of cardboard. Oh my goodness. Think about that. How can we design a bridge out of cardboard? It's really important for us it, at Steam Truck in developing our curricula that we are actually folding in standards that the teachers need to teach. So one example of that is that I have this board game project that I have done at several schools and whatever content the teacher needs to communicate, we can do with this project. And at Kindesi, we sat down with the teachers and found out that the fifth grade science teachers needed to be teaching cell biology. So we had our board games and we had post-it notes for as many board games as we could possibly think over like a two minute period. And then we matched those up. So what would what would like Nucleus monopo Monopoly look like? Or what would Hungry Hungry Hippos and Endoplasmic Reticulum look like? And that was sort of our starting point for that. And then we ended up with some really cool games. We ended up with a operation game where you had to pull out the organelles and heads up game with cell biology vocab and so you're teaching you're teaching the things that the teachers need to teach but it's in a hands-on and exciting experiential way what we're going to do with all these biology terms and all these board game terms 
is I want you to pick up, I want you to each pick up one cell biology term and one board game. And then we're going to imagine what that board game would look like. My favorite thing about this steam truck um, was when we did the word of the day and the games. Um, one game, I forgot what it was called, but you had to like get in a circle and like make a knot um, and you had to like untie it. Um, yeah. Ulysses, Ulysses, Ulysses. Yeah, he goes to save me. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to turn on the, the laser cutter and do the laser, we're going to laser cut this Yes. Um, vector sketch that we made based on your, your design. Okay. We're kind of just breaking down that notion that they are different things by saying you can learn science by building something um, beautiful or building something that will be fun, like an arcade game uh, or a Rube Goldberg machine. The Rube Goldberg machine in and of itself is an art project. So it's a mechanical art project that explores physics artistically um, because it makes absolutely no sense. It's inherently useless, like people don't actually build Rube Goldbergs for anything other than aesthetic uh, exploration. All right guys, so do you remember the uh, Rube Goldberg videos I showed you? Okay, well, so now today, keeping those Rube Goldberg um, videos in mind, I want you guys just to tinker. So basically, this is a free-for-all where you play with different stuff, marbles, dominoes, I've got, you know, popsicle sticks and what have you. I want you guys just to basically free think and see what you can learn from going crazy on this stuff and incorporate it into the Rube Goldberg that we're going to make later. So, have at it. With the Rube Goldberg machine, uh, I usually start with the six simple uh, machines. Um, lever, I introduce a lever, incline plane, and I'll give them a day just to explore those different types of machines. And from the exploration of that simple machine, they'll make a component of the actual Rube Goldberg. think we could do in order to make it so that it works a little bit more effectively. Yes. Put them closer to that and so when it hit, when it falls, it can hit it and they can make the two ways go and make it fall and hit the dominoes more hard. Yeah, let's, let's try these out. Let's see if we can get these. Because we'll, we'll want to be able to work up some of this momentum to the larger pieces. Does anybody know what team building means? What does it mean when you team build? Divorce. We work together. Okay, when you, when you work together as a group. Okay, why is that important to work together as a group when you're doing a project? Why is that important? Patrick? It's important to work as a team because you can get more, more things done as a team. Steam Truck creates unprecedented opportunities for students to take leadership in their projects and to delegate to each other. Um, so, so often team projects in school can end up with workload, you know, unbalanced or with people disengaged, more engaged than others. Uh, we, a lot of our projects are, are just so hands-on and so product oriented that it's, it becomes this real community coming together on one thing and it creates a whole it creates a whole like new experience for for the classroom. Working in a group was good because I didn't get to use the chopper because I was too short. So the two taller kids got to use it. So without them, I I think we I couldn't finish the thing by cutting the wood. We should learn and we should work together in communities. We should teach that from a young age. This way you have to deal with personalities. You have to deal with like different kind of power dynamics, but then there's beautiful things where when a project all comes together, they can celebrate it together. It's not just one person doing, getting straight A's and another person, you know, not excelling. It's everybody kind of taking a piece of that pie that they made together. 
Um, like my teacher says, um, teamwork is a dream work. Um, we had fun um, building together. Um, you can accomplish things together. As far as critical thinking, um, I love it because if they're presented with a problem, now instead of always looking to me for an answer, they will try themselves to try to figure it out before they actually um, you know, try to come to me with an answer. So it, I believe what they have learned in Steam Truck is to first, I guess, seek within yourself, try to find the answer, and then they always know that I'm always here to support them in their learning. I think we've done an amazing job of capturing the type of impact we've had on students. Uh, we do a couple different things. One, we look at both uh, sort of their, the students' interests and abilities in STEM, uh, and we've tracked that and we've seen some amazing growth. We also look at non-cognitive growth, so things like creativity and innovation, teamwork and collaboration. We have lots of data points. We use both teacher observation, uh, staff observation, as well as students' um, surveys to really track to see. And really over the course of 20 days, we've seen some amazing progress, both in the cognitive skill development in STEM, as well as, to be honest, I think sometimes the more important non-cognitive growth uh, in creativity and innovation that I think is essential for a kid to thrive in the 21st century. I've had so many students come to me at the end of the project and say, I didn't know that this was something we could do, that this was something I could do, that this was possible. So I had, um, had been in the classroom for many years. I went back to school to, to do education policy and, and Steam Truck is really my sort of uh, attempt to disrupt what happens inside a classroom in, in a supportive way. So uh, I think too often classrooms, to be completely fair and honest, um, look almost exactly as they have for the past hundred years. Um, if our grandparents walked in, they probably, except for a little, maybe some technology things, kids are sitting behind desks in rows. Uh, what we want to do is bring back the possibility for kids to use their hands and make things and in the process change how teachers are teaching and how kids are learning. I think there's this trend in education right now of detaching STEM from the arts and not only is it unnecessary, it's, it's detrimental because they are, they can be married and they, they, they should be. I mean, a set designer is, is an architect who, can, who knows theater and a jewelry designer is a machinist who has an eye for the way things work on people's bodies and the same, the same with a fashion designer. Um, but you don't. But you don't even need to be thinking about your career goals when you're talking about how STEM and the arts can work together, because it just makes it more engaging. It's just more interesting.